well, it's a beautiful day here in the neighborhood. And won't you be my, won't you be my neighbor? Hey, hey, everybody. Tim here, Gray Man Poda, amateur radio call sign, November Whiskey 9 Foxtrot. A couple of months ago, uh, hanging out at uh, Dayton Ham uh, my friend, Freddie Mac, uh, Ham Radio Crusader, pulled out this really cool all star node. Uh, that he was evaluating, and I got to looking at it and thinking, you know, this is a cool, cool concept. Uh, so, uh, what he had was the RT, no, the URI 141 uh, slash RT85. Now, it's the uh, URI 141 device from AllScan. And what he has done is integrated a uh, Redivis. 85 HT into it. It's a little bit more durable than something like a Shari node for taking out on the road. And I thought this is a really cool idea. Not only because the Shari node is limited to the uh, max power of, I think, maybe one watt at tops. And I uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, but if I'm wrong, make sure to comment down below. Um, but the nice thing about this integration with the uh, radio, a couple things. One, uh, because it's an HT, I've, I've got that low, medium, high power mode, right? So if I'm just kind of cruising in the truck, right? Using my, uh, radio that's in the truck, my FTM 400, uh, FTM 400 mafia for life. If I felt obligated to get a tattoo inclined so much, I might get an FTM 400 tattoo, but that's a whole side story. But uh, with this, it does give me the ability, you know, low power, medium, high. So like a watt and a half, couple watts, five watts. That's nice. So when you're out camping, hiking, things like that, I, I can keep the node going uh, at, back in my truck and have a, a little bit further range than I would if I just had uh, something that uses that, uh, or, you know, 818 SU8 or SA818 chip on board. Uh, a hat with the Raspberry Pi. So that was the first thing. So I liked that. Um, the other thing is, is because it's an HT, I can do UHF or VHF. And that is something that I thought would be really cool because I'll be traveling. I don't always know what the RF landscape is going to look like in any given area. And I thought that this would be a great option to allow me to shift around as needed in a particular area as not to interfere with maybe other repeaters or other simplex nodes that are out there or just a common frequency that somebody might use on a regular basis, right? So that I thought was a really neat idea. So as I was surfing around on his website, I did notice he had a slightly different model than the one uh, Freddie Mac had. And this was the URI 145-RT85. And man, that's a mouthful. And I'm not knocking on the radio or his, his thing or anything. Have you guys noticed as ham radio operators? Uh, once again, hit that like button down below. If you think as ham radio operators, we have way too many part numbers and model numbers that we like to cite. Yeah, hit the like button if you think that is, that's the case too. Uh, but with that uh, unit, the difference between it is, functionally, it's still the same. What's nice about it is it integrates... Uh, and feeds uh, from a 9 to 16 volt power supply, which makes it even more ideal for being in a vehicle. So now I don't have to keep a, a, a way of, of stepping down my vehicle's power to power this unit. So I plug it into the vehicle's battery, and that's all I have to worry about. So today we're going to talk about uh, and just kind of go over this unit briefly. Uh, there's not a whole lot to it. And in subsequent videos, I'm going to go ahead and uh, build it out so it uh, runs off a Raspberry Pi. But also during Prime Day, um, I stumbled across a, a good deal on a 12 volt, one of those little mini computers. So I can do both a 12 volt uh, mini computer and a Raspberry Pi to, to, to drive this thing into the All Star network. So uh, in subsequent videos, I'm going to do that. I'll set it up one for Raspberry Pi and one for uh, the Intel-based uh, mini computer. Now, ASL3 has uh, pre-built images for both of those, which makes this even easier. All right, with that being said, let's head over to the bench and check this thing out. So here it is. It's really very simple. I mean, it's a Redivus 
uh, RT85 HT. Everybody is familiar with those. Now, what David has done is actually just affixed it right to the back of this unit. Uh, it's an extruded aluminum case, and he's got his circuit board inside of there. Uh, on auto and off switch for the radio. We have lights to let us know the status of what's going on. We have our integrated power and communication cables uh, to the, the radio. Anywhere it needs to be filtered, it is. So we've got the filtering there. We also have filtering on the USB cable that will connect into your compute device. And he has also included power cables for these things. On the other side here, uh, in addition to this, we have the input for the DC voltage from the vehicle, 9 to 16 volts, and we also have a pass-through so I can power the 12-volt radio. And the Raspberry Pi will get powered off the USB-C. So other than that, it's fairly simple. I've got some mounting ideas on how I want to mount it into the back of the Bronco. It's going to be a, almost a, a, a fixed permanent installation. Uh, I will set this up so it basically automatically connects to the hotspot on my phone. Whenever I'm in the vehicle uh, and I've got the hotspot turned on, it will connect, which should be most of the time. And if it's not connected, if I'm here at the house, it'll connect to the house wireless. Um, so with all that being said, I think that's uh, that's about a wrap on this video. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Uh, the next couple videos I'll be putting out will be one uh, to do the Raspberry Pi and one for the 12 volt computer. Um, and if you're interested in supporting the channel, I have memberships available and I also have a uh, merch store. Uh, so please, questions, comments, put those down in the comment section below. If you liked this video, please hit the like button, share this content with your friends. And once again, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. And until we have an opportunity to meet on the air, I have a video right over here that you might be interested in.